Washington. James Freeman and Guy Benson are here now. Great to have you both with us. Guy, can we get your take um, from last night as you wake up this morning to the news that Nikki Haley has said, all right, enough's enough. Well, I'm not really surprised because she had telegraphed in previous election speeches that she wasn't going anywhere in Iowa, New Hampshire, and beyond, saying, we're going to go to this place next. We're spending money here. We're going to keep fighting. There was none of that rhetoric ahead of last night, really, and then certainly that silence that Bill Malugin just talked about, I think, spoke volumes, and now we have this expected result. Look, she fought hard. She represented a lot of voters, not nearly enough, but a lot of them. And she put up a valiant effort. She won a couple of primaries. Some people thought she would win zero. So hats off to her. But now this is going to become a very long and in some ways excruciating general election. And last night, my biggest takeaway, Dana, was watching the speech from President Trump. It was exclusively a general election speech. His main message is the country was better off. You were better off when I was president across these various metrics and issue sets. And a lot of voters, not even just his base, agree with that. On the other side, Joe Biden, no speech, no event, a yep. pre-written statement. They hit send, basically, around 10 p.m. Eastern time when the candidate might have been asleep by that point, just saying Donald Trump is unacceptable. We've got to save democracy. These are the themes we're going to hear for the next eight months. Okay. Guy, thank you for that. James? Yeah, the people uh, in the Republican Party spoke pretty loudly. Uh, they want uh, Trump to be the nominee. Uh, as you said, he's kind of pivoted to the general election uh, campaign. And uh, unfortunately, the statement from Joe Biden was largely an attack on Donald Trump. And I think this is a moment people have been talking about what uh, Donald Trump needs to hear from voters. I think Joe Biden would do himself and the country a world of good by now saying, let's call off the lawfare against President Trump. We're going to let voters decide. He should tell his attorney general, Merrick Garland, enough of these cases, some of which I'm obviously guilty of as well. Uh, it would, I think, be a, a wonderful moment to heal the country and also good for Biden. This is possible? not a prediction, okay. yeah. but I think this yeah. is part of the reason we're here today, mm -hmm. uh, implausibly perhaps with Donald Trump as the nominee again, is people look at him and they see flaws, but they say the abuses of his opponents are worse. And I think the, all of these court cases targeting him had a lot to do with him uh, cruising to what appears to be I mean, barring some so, so very weird right, event, right. the nomination in a few weeks. Guy, one of the things that Biden said in his statement was that, are we really going to go back to the days where uh, we're in chaos because of Donald Trump? But I actually think voters are trying to signal to the pollsters, to all of us, that they feel like it's chaos now. Like, they don't feel secure. They right. don't feel steady. And there were some warning signs for President Biden, even in places like Texas, where the Democrats have been trying to make certain gains over the years with Hispanic voters. What do the Democrats take away from last night? Well, I think that's such an important point, because, yes, a lot of American voters associate chaos with Trump. That's part of his personality. It was certainly one of the words that characterized his four years as president. But you look around, look at the border, look at the Middle East, look at Ukraine, look at people's pocketbooks and inflation, look at crime in some of our major cities. Chaos very much reigns in a lot of ways under President Biden. So I think just saying the other side are chaos agents, I'm not sure that's going to really fly. I mean, in mm -hmm. that same statement that Biden's team put out, they were talking about some of their achievements and their accomplishments. They'll give some lip service to that. Most voters aren't buying it, as we've seen in a lot of the polling. They're deeply dissatisfied with the incumbent's performance. Make no mistake, the next eight months will be the Biden campaign saying the other guy is totally unacceptable and the Trump campaign basically making the mirror argument. So it's going to be a brutally negative campaign. And yeah, the Democrats should be nervous about some elements of their base that appear to be unhappy or maybe not terribly excited about Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, maybe peeling off back to Trump, as we saw in that New York Times poll this week. Ralph Norman is a Republican from South Carolina. He, he was, I, I think, the only elected official in the entire state who, who did not get behind Donald Trump. Everybody else did. Uh, and James, uh, on this whole Nikki Haley point, a lot of people think the, the nerves right now are raw, but th this stuff can heal easily. And Norman made that point <laughs> that, you know, she's, she's going to fall in line. Um, 
Maybe the best example is just how rancorous it got with Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Uh, they seem to do okay in the end, right? Yeah. She became a cabinet yeah. member. So uh, coming up here 45 minutes from now, what would you expect from Nikki Haley? Well, I, I guess I'm not expecting it, but I'm hoping that uh, if she wants to have a, a future in the Republican Party, if she wants to influence the party this year and ultimately be a presidential candidate in a future year, I think she should endorse Donald Trump. Now, maybe that doesn't happen today. Maybe that happens later. But if she's ruling out a third party run, which yeah. she seems to be doing, yeah. I, I think, uh, to your point, there, there is an argument, as she has talked about reasonably, the need for unity and reaching out to different voters who don't necessarily love Donald Trump. I think she might set an example as well, because, you know, there was a message to her as well last night. Um, we can talk about the, the sort of phrase in the coalition for Trump, but mm -hmm. the message was pretty clear to her in a lot of states that mm -hmm. they prefer Trump this time. There's a, a, throughout the campaign, I felt that she had a real clarity of purpose, and she was one of the first to bring up that this election really is about going against Kamala Harris. And it was something I think that a lot of people yep. picked up on, and maybe you'll hear a little bit more of that from her today, but clarity of purpose from the campaign up until today when yeah. she's going to suspend. Gentlemen, thank you. Nice yes, to see you both, Guy Benson and James Freeman. Stick around, okay? I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.